city. You ready for another run? Got one last year. You ready for another one? We don't hear the noise or the hate. We just get it done. I guess only champs feel where we coming from. Lone Squad is a name that's already known. But if you live under a rock, I'm talking Pat Mahomes. That's a reigning Super Bowl MVP that can strike through the air or do you in with his cleat sheet. We got Tyreek Hill, not even real. Here's the deal on the field. These fast as automobiles. And Travis Kelsey is a monster, but with skill. A thousand yards, five straight seasons, no chill. Tyron Matthew got the defense locked up in case you was wondering why your offense stopped. We just get started. Gotta blow teams out, just win. Breaking news, we make champs, this just in. We know exactly what this run takes, that's a fact. Hey, Kansas City, what you say? Can we back the back? Okay. The Super Bowl champs have at it after hearing about, well, the Browns have finally made it and the Bills have made it and the Bucks have made it and all that. Yeah, well, the Chiefs are making it. And it's time to talk about the defending Super Bowl champs. Jeff Chatea is in Arrowhead for Browns and Chiefs. Thanks, Rich. Well, there's so much talk about Patrick Mahomes' arm and all things he can do with his that arm talent, but his legs will be a big factor in this game. He said he wants to be able to run more in this postseason. If you go back to last postseason, he ran a lot. Led the Chiefs in rushing, had a big run in the championship game against Tennessee. And he said the big thing about running in these kind of games is you have to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, uh, everything is going to be on, uh, at stake. You have to make the plays. You have to make when they are available. And now we'll go to Mooch and Irv to talk more about the Chiefs. All right. Actually, we're going to go to Kurt and Irv. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Chiefs. And we're going to talk about this idea of repeating. Yes, I know. You did it. I wasn't able to do it. But let's talk a little bit about the biggest challenges for this Chiefs team as they enter the playoffs. Well, and, and we were just talking about this off, off camera, Kurt. One of the great things about it, once you get here, you feel like, <laughs> okay, we're good. Right. It's the regular season, getting through that regular season. But I do remember walking on the field like they will walk on the field today, playing against somebody, a, a team that hadn't had a Super Bowl, hadn't been there in a while, and looking in his eyes and seeing that hunger, like, we need to get there, like Cleveland will have in their eyes today. And I remember saying, we got to match that hunger. Even though we just won a Super Bowl, we have to match that hunger. Well, And you have to hear about it all week, every week. The Chiefs are going to be the favorites from here on out in every yeah. game. And you're going to hear, oh, the Chiefs should win this one easily. Oh, the That's Browns have no too. chance in point. this game. And you got to be able point. to tune right. all that all noise that out. out and say, okay, it yeah. doesn't matter. Last year doesn't matter. What happened in the regular season doesn't matter. What happens is or what matters is what happens today, right. what we take care of today. And the one thing that I'm, I'm a little concerned about with this Chiefs team is they've started slow. You can go all the way back to the playoffs last year. They've started slow numerous times. And I know Patrick Mahomes is special. They got all kinds playoffs, of playmakers. Right. But can you continue to overcome that's that if one. you start slow, Michael? No, and, and, and you're right about that. And, and sooner or later, that's going to catch up with you. And, and they have to make sure they're not doing that again this year. But, you know, Kurt, actually, when everybody was saying that uh, we're, we were the favorites and all of that, we didn't try to cool it in our locker room. I was like, they're right. Like Let's that? make sure we beat them by 30. Well, they're right. I didn't try to cool that down. Well, and again, you, you have to try to use the motivation that right. works within your locker room. Right. That's exactly right. What works for you? You, you like it when people telling you you're, you're pretty right. good. For We're more, great. For Let's more go prove them game, right. We're great. Let's That's head what, over to right. Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia, take it away. It's now time for our Next Gen Stats powered by AWS. I want to break down a little bit about the Browns' run tendencies. Look at these two. This is the pre-snap alignment. They're under center. They run the ball 82 2.9% of the time. This is the situation they face. A stacked box, meaning defenses are going to try to stop the run. They average five yards per rush in this situation and 4.7 in this. So, Coach, break this down a little bit. What are we seeing under center and why is it okay. so effective? This right here, this, that's not mutually exclusive, those two stats, because 82% under center, that's the highest in the National Football League. And what that means is you have all of your run game available to you, everything right and left, versus being in the shot gun where you're limited in the run game well that means you're going to get stacked boxes right because they, all the runs are going to be there and that means you're going to have to do some more play action pass uh, with those runs that's how they play football that's been their recipe and i love it because that's old school steve young never went in shotgun and you know what uh, baker mayfield now 82 percent under center i love it all right i love it well under center rich you're up Thanks so much. Throughout the 2020 playing season, NFL players have honored victims of social injustice by wearing their names on helmets and by 
bringing their stories to light. In this installment of Say Their Stories, the Chiefs Tyron Matthews shares the story of a 37-year-old man from his home state of Louisiana named Alton Sterling. Fun-loving man, father of five, made everybody laugh. I think that was one of his gifts of selling CDs. We're using his personality, his gift, his fun-loving spirit to try his best to provide for his family and make ends meet. When I see pictures of all... Take it away, James. Well, thanks, Rich. During the regular season, we all know the Saints swept the Bucks, And all week, Bruce Arians was saying it was the turnovers that played such a big factor in those two losses. And he's right. Almost half of Tom Brady's interceptions this season happened in those two losses against the Saints. And this week, Brady said there may not be a stat more closely tied to wins and losses than turnover margin. He said a lot of it is going to fall on him and these wide receivers being on the same page so they can play with anticipation. He told me that him him and this group of new receivers, the chemistry has come a long way since the beginning of the year. Since their week 13 bye, 14 touchdowns, one interception. He says the Saints have a lot of swagger. And Bruce Arians also added that he believes our offense, nobody in the league, has more swagger than us right now. We'll get our first look at Tom Brady, the Hall of Fame greatest of all time. Quarterback sneak, spikes that ball, Tom Brady. Who says I'm 43? Camaro walks into the end zone. Brady throws the ball up field. It is intercepted. Robert Camaro into the end zone. Throw near side. It's picked off. Pick six. The Tom Brady era begins with a loss. Bucks hosting the Saints, looking for revenge. Free back in the end zone. Touchdown! Couldn't have gone any better. It's been all Saints. Brady picked off. Intercepted. It's picked off by the Saints. For the first time in Tom Brady's career, he swept by a divisional opponent. That may be one of the most jarring statistics or <laughs> shocking statistics or for Brady most impressive. He's never, he never had gotten swept by a division opponent in his career until the Saints did him. And in terms of touchdown to interception ratio and passer rating, nobody got Brady like the Saints have gotten him this year. So my question for you is, Kurt, what does the tape from those two games show you and how can it actually be used to see what might happen today well a lot of teams or people when they when they look at the the bucks is they look at all the weapons that the bucks have and so they play a little scared like oh my gosh how do we cover all of these guys the saints don't do that the saints come up and they challenge the receivers of the bucks they will get up in their face they will play tight man-to-man -man coverage and they let those four guys up front go after Tom Brady. They've had great success rushing for, getting in Tom Brady's face, making him uncomfortable, and they take away those quick throws when they get up in your face. And so they will do a lot of different things on the back end, but they will challenge those receivers and expect those four guys up front to get after Tom Brady. And that's exactly what's happened up to this point. Jane Slater has a Saints point of view for this big game. Jane, take it away. Well, Rich, Alvin Kamara had two rushing touchdowns against the Bucks this season. Not bad, right? But that number one ranked run defense has certainly found a way to limit him. They limited him with 3.75 yards per touch. The rest of the season, he was averaging 6.3. Now, that's probably why Bruce Arians, when put on the spot, was asked, who would you rather not face on that Saints offense? And he said Michael Thomas. But if you look at Alvin Kamara's game since week nine, it deserves a little bit of respect. He's had nearly 600 rushing yards of offense and nearly 14 touchdowns. So, Mooch, Mike, I got to ask you, do you agree with Bruce Arians or you put a little bit more respect on Alvin Kamara's name? Yeah, you really do, Jane. So I, I ask you then. Yeah, or backers now. <laughs> Huh? Well, yeah, those, those linebackers. Yeah, well, they got those, some linebackers. Well, the Bucks defense slowed down Drew Brees. They sure didn't do it last game. And they didn't coach it, and, and they gave up big <laughs> plays. They, they gave up a lot of big plays. That game, that, that last game, week nine, it was out of hand early because of those big plays, and that's what the Bucks have to stop. <clears throat> they have to make Drew Brees and his football team walk this ball down the field. Michael Thomas is coming back. That's great. Make them use Michael Thomas in yeah. that short passing game. But don't give them anything over the top. Don't give them the short field, and you'll have a chance. You mentioned the linebackers, okay? Levante, yeah. David, they got a they couple got some, of great ones. They right? got some linebackers. Right? And Devin White's coming and back, Devin a rookie White. from LSU. Here's their game. They're going to be, there's Elvin Kamara back there. Everybody else is hurt, right? They got one guy, Elvin Kamara, the whole day. Right. They got to tackle that guy in the run game, right? Half the time it's in space. That's hard to do because Alvin Kamara is so dynamic. And, you and don't then all of a edge. sudden, they're going to put him over there in the slot. They're going to put you him out there. Right. In man coverage, they got to walk out there and cover him one on one. These two linebackers have to have a great game against Alvin Kamara if they want to slow down. If they can slow him down, make him walk that thing down.